All right, love them knives channel. Got the real steel Harrier. Uh, man, there's a lot to talk about with this knife. This is Carson design, Carson Huang, H A U N G, and an interesting, an interesting design. This is, I guess, made to uh, celebrate. Real Steel Knives Company's uh, fifth year. It's a five-year birthday thing. And so this knife is, uh, to celebrate that, Titanium Frame Lock Flipper. Interesting knife. I mean, just, wow, so much to talk about with this. You got a forward choil. You got jimping on the top here of the blade, but not on the top of the scales. Okay, it's got CTS 204P blade steel, and they just go 204P here, but I'll show you the paperwork from uh, Real Steel. It's a stone wash type blade. They got these little cutaways here, as you can see. And, you know, you've got this S-shaped uh, lock bar, which is typical with the Megalodon knives and several others that were made uh, with his design as well. Deep carry pocket clip looks to be titanium. And let's see if I got my little, my little magnet thing around here buried, buried in my stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's... It's not magnetic, so whatever. Um, there's your lockup. And you've got a lock bar insert, hardened steel lock bar insert in there. Okay, about 30%. Pretty easy to disengage. You can see right there, the pass-through, not difficult. Drop, click, centered up. No blade play or lock rock on this knife at all. This is the S series, so this is more expensive type of uh, knife. Of course, real steel. Also, San Ran Mu, uh, SRM, which is kind of the upscale San Ran Mu thing. So all that stuff's going on with this same company. And of course, uh, people saying that also San Ran Mu makes the, the Chinese, uh, manufactured CRKTs and Spydercos and things like that because they're an OEM manufacturer as well. I don't know that for a fact, but in any case, here we go. Real steel. This one obviously has a, a number on it, 151. So apparently they're a numbered edition, which they don't have the number on the outside of the box here. It just says Harrier. Okay. But here obviously number 151 so date it was made carson huang uh tc4 titanium stone wash three and a half inch blade a uh, four millimeter thick 204p named the harrier it comes in this box and there's where the knife sits along with what is that <laughs> what is that it's this okay so this also comes in the box here like that and I'm not gonna push it all the way down but if you noticed now let's just do that for background but you notice look at the pivot okay see the pivot on both sides pivot collar and eh, here we go yes I know uh, you can get um, probably this might work with some of those inland ones too because they had a three prong deal or snap ring pliers but they give you the tool so i mean but it's proprietary which some people do not like regardless because if they lose the tool then they're kind of out of luck don't know i'm sure you could probably get another one from real steel but yeah it's not a great situation necessarily for those of you who don't like these proprietary and we knives kind of came off of that even though they give you the tool and changed up but here you go 
And it's kind of, you know, it just fits right in there and it'll turn. I took this one apart and I'm not going to turn this, but yeah, there's how the tool fits. And it does fit nicely. Even looking through the camera, it's right there. And it's making contact all the way around. So that's cool. They give you the tool. It's cool to have the tool. Nicely made. I mean, nice machined little part. I mean, that took a little bit of doing right there. Nicely done. Of course, this knife's not cheap. I can't remember if it's like 200. It's 200 and something dollars. Uh, I think they call it uh, the t total suggested retail price being $345, but that's just kind of like when ZT calls theirs 300 and some, and then they sell them for 220 or 240. So uh, I'll give you the link to White Mountain Knives. I noticed that they actually do have these in stock, and I kept thinking I saw it was under 300. So, and with the 10% discount, another, you know, 20 something to $30 off. Yeah, interesting at that point, right? CTS 204P steel. Not bad. The action's really, really good on this knife. And see how that's kind of a, a bead blast, you know, type finish on the scales. And then this is inset carbon fiber. Kind of like islands in the storm, huh? It's just kind of there. It's a little weird, but it's, I guess it's okay. I mean, it breaks things up. You know, uh, you know, one thing I guess I did probably bitch about with the Megalodons are that they were very, very plain. And so, uh, except like the, the newest one, which was uh, carbon fiber on the front. But I mean, the ones previous to that. So, oh well. And the Griffin, they, they, were, they were showy. They're nice. In any case, so interesting knife. Big front forward choil. Oh, well, while we're talking, while we're getting close to the blade, let's see. Okay. It's pretty sharp right out of the box, so, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Let's get this picked up off of here. Um, yeah, look at the backspacer. So you got all these... I don't know if I... You know, as far as disassembly goes... I mean, these spacers in here don't thrill me because, you know, I, they can fall out, they can tumble all over and this and that. So it's it's an interesting design cue and all that kind of thing. Also gives you some structural integrity, I guess. Uh, but, um, and I've seen this, where did I see this before? God, I've seen this before on some other knife. In any case, yeah. And then here you go with the rest of the back spacer. And an integrated pocket clip, which is kind of stealth here. I mean, you got to go kind of down in here and then come back up to run the paracord or whatever through there, your lanyard through there. This cutaway in here, interesting as well. Uh, down there on the uh, lock bar. Hmm. Uh, obviously, maybe that makes it easier to engage and disengage. Uh, and and not so stiff, easier to push away. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Of course, you have a over travel stop on here as well. Three and a half inch. So let's let's pull the para two out here. Fancy. Come on out, and let's take a look and see what we think from a, a perspective here. And I've got garbage all over the table. Let me kind of get that cleared up. But uh, what do you think? Pretty close to the same size. Let's reverse. I mean, it's a three and a half inch blade. This is a three and a half inch blade for all practical purposes. So they look about the same size. Look about the same size. Now, put it all on here. Get the tape and get an actual, actual... So, um, yeah, three, it's really more than three and a half. It's three, and they said 3.54, but I'm going to say more like 3.65. Uh, so, 
And depending if you laid a ruler down here and you're looking at the back of the choil, you're looking at three and three quarter inches. So you're looking at about 95, 96 millimeters. They're saying 90 millimeters. I beg to differ on this one. Uh, eh, okay. I mean, I kind of see where they're coming from, but mm, I'd say more like 92. In any case, at the absolute shortest, 21 centimeters and eight and a quarter overall, exact same length as the paramilitary two. You can see this open area in here. And let me just get to this part of the review. Cause uh, I mean, does it feel good in the hands? Yeah, pocket clip, don't like this. I don't like this. I like it, I mean, I prefer, let me see if I can find a pocket clip that I prefer. Oh my God. They've all gone completely crazy on me. Um, come here. Well, that's milk. Crap. Nah, you're right. Okay, so this flips up. Sorry about that, but this flips up a little bit too much. I kind of like it when, if they do flip up, then they level out at the end. And I actually don't. I mean, I'm looking at the two you knife. Nope. But it doesn't flip up as high. See? I mean, this definitely stays more level. This is, you know, the difference between no hot spot and possibly having a hot spot. Although, I will say that I'm not feeling it. I'm not really feeling it that much. I guess it's just hitting me in a crease in here for some reason. Depending on the size of your hands, it could present a bit of a hot spot for you. Um, you know, a numbered edition knife that's titanium and carbon fiber and stuff. I, you know, <laughs> let's go back to this. Yeah, if I'm going out to kick it, I'm taking something like this. I, I'm not taking uh, a an SRP, almost three hundred dollar knife or so, uh, three hundred fifty dollar knife out. So this probably will never see a lot of real hard usage on it. But yeah, I understand that could be a bit of a of an issue. Um, otherwise, I mean, I really haven't noticed it. I'm just looking at that at the pocket clip and imagining that yeah, it could depending on the size of your hand, the placement, what you're cutting, how long, that kind of thing. So yes, that's all possible. Uh, take a look at the overall thickness and you know let's get right up on top of this carbon fiber uh, for the thickest point and we're looking at you know six eh, not quite six tenths but pretty close 0.56 14.4 millimeters if we get off of that if we can get in between here 13.15 so, so you know about a half inch otherwise. Now, this is supposed to be four millimeter blade stock and uh, 0.15, 3.9. So yeah, we got four millimeter blade stock on there. Let's talk about the, the crazy stuff here. Oh, I did, I, I'm gonna give you a link to the Real Steel site. You can read up on this, but I'll also give you a link to, uh, to White Mountain where you can actually buy this because obviously I'm not paying $345 for this knife and I'll guarantee you I did not pay $345 for this knife anywhere close to it. Um, so um, in any case this will give you the pause and read. You can see fifth anniversary Carson Wong uh, the you know I mean Real Steel's making a statement here. This is not their bread and butter, these S series knives. This is just coming out saying we can do this with competence and confidence. Uh, so, but most of their knives are worker knives, which I really like. And so the Precision 3001 just came out and they got another one coming out. But in any case, so, and then these three came out too. This and the Havron and the Relic. So, reach 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 so these i mean it was really strange that we came out with a a three-fold release almost at the same time 
Uh, these two, of course, being an Ivan Bragnitz uh, design, you can see his logo on the blades here. So that's, yeah, interesting, huh? How they did this and the, this one being the Carson. Any case, so the ball bearing system is so funky on this, okay? And so is the detent ball situation. And they, they talk about it here. Uh, <laughs> it's a double-headed uh, detent ball. It's crazy. Uh, okay, so off of here. And let me just go to some interior uh, disassembly shots here because this is this is interesting it really is these are where your ceramic bearings are and they're multi-row bearings but this is a cup <laughs> you know I described it as a cup but you know what it is is a single piece that comes up it's got a bottom to it and those bearings fit in there and then this top you can see where this is machined to fit to flip over and face down on these bearings so it seals them in it's a closed system and and also by the way fyi if you're gonna take this knife apart be very careful these bearings you pop that bearing race out of there or something flips out these bearings are loose they will go flying everywhere i had my share of fun uh, positioning them back into into place because uh, a couple of them did uh, roll out of where where their little seated area is so yes oh, man that was a that was a blast and a half okay so you can see these little spacers along here now you can see this look at this okay so you got a detent ball but you got a detent ball. You got two detent balls. Interesting. Okay, next. A little closer look at the at the ceramic bearings here. Multi-row. Got a little bit of lube in there. I think I put that in there. Um, <laughs> it's not like wheel bearings. You're trying to pack them with grease or anything. But I put a little lube in there before I flip the top back on. But, man, you got to watch that. I mean, it's really, it could get away from you. There's the top part of that little bearing pack there um also a little closer detail on these two ceramic detent balls it is a different feel this is a different type feel knife um, when you have it in your hand you will definitely notice the difference in the feel of this why this i mean supposedly for stability and all that kind of thing really interesting of course uh, who was it that did uh, the Toro for Kaiser uh, and uh, Diskin. Uh, and he did a double detent, but the detent ball was on opposite sides of the blade on that Kaiser Toro. You can look at my review on that. It's a dual detent ball. And for stability, that's what Kaiser told me why he did that. So, in any case interesting huh so you've got these two little detent balls in there and uh it's a different feel it really is there you go see funky funky uh, disengaging like i said is real easy it's like a click a, a click click it's a real rapid succession click click on the the detent it it's it's a different it's a different sound it's It's almost a double kick, okay. you know, as that opens and closes. Kick okay. and kind of a real rabbit. You can hear them both kind of clicking. And, and those bearings are really, really, really super smooth. Super smooth. It's just really strange. It's a strange feel. It's the most unique feeling flipper I've ever had in my hands. I mean, short of the Toro, which the Toro kind of bothered me a little bit because you couldn't just disengage and drop it like this because they were on opposite sides. So you had one detent ball kick and then it stopped part way back 
and then you had to push it past the second detent ball to close it so you couldn't do this. You couldn't just do a drop, you know what I mean? So that kind of bothered me, although I loved the knife overall. But wow, what a different looking knife. Check out the backspacer. It's real chunky and cool looking. Now, me being me, I would have done a little insert of carbon fiber on the back. I would have. So maybe a little piece here. Maybe, well, I don't know if this would move enough to dislodge, but maybe you could have put a little strip in here. Or maybe a little chunk kind of in here, here, whatever. I mean, it would have balanced it for me a little bit better. Or just gone straight titanium. In any case, I guess that's my biggest niggle about this knife. Other than, I mean, the the... the the design flows pretty good. I mean, I'm seeing kind of the back here of this blade. So that is not as desirable as if it disappeared back into this bolster area. But on whole, it's a pretty good looking design. Look at the flipper tab. Not that tall. Not that tall. Jimped on the front. Um, and here's, of course, your stop pin. Um pretty intuitive uh, as far as the detent goes let me see here's the thing you don't want to if you're going to squeeze on here you're never going to throw that blade out because you're squeezing on the lock bar so trying to keep from oh man um it's not because the detent is that strong maybe it's just good that i mean you got that double detent ball it's it's tough to overcome that um, because check this out. It's, it's not that strong because watch this. You can middle finger flick this pretty easily and even maybe thumb if you can get your fingers off this lock bar on the back side. You can thumb flick it, but you got to watch it because the more you push like this, you cannot, you cannot push that out. So, uh... No, this is probably not one that would be easy to, uh... okay, there it goes. So, you know, it's, it's just about, really, when I feel it here, the detent, just about the same as most flippers, a five to a five and a half. The only thing is, with this lock bar design like this, it's easy to, um, to, to push too hard and, and make it a pretty stiff detent, which you might like. Uh, otherwise, you get your fingers away from it because if you middle finger flick, you're not touching that lock bar, okay? So then you can flick it out and you can tell the detent's not that horribly strong. Uh, but you gotta get your fingers all the way away from this lock bar to throw that out because I, I'm i still having a hard time, but I did it at one time. It's just, but it, it's smooth. Let's see if we can fail it. It's not that, I tried to fail it. It's, it's pretty easy. It comes out real easy. Forget it then. I mean, but I, I'm sure it can be failed. That was close. Wow, wow. Okay, that's good. I mean, it's good. The action's really good on this, and the drop is really good. Right? So, the double detent ball, how crazy. All those free-floating multi-row bearings with the little top that fits over the top, <laughs> over it to seal the bearings in, keep dirt and debris from getting in there. Uh, yeah, and all these multiple uh, spacers through here, design cue there. Different feel, different sound when this thing operates. It's really strange. All I can say is they're numbered. They're interesting. Come in a nice box. You got microfiber cloth. You get the tool with it as well. So, I don't know. I, you know, it's, it just depends on the design. 
obviously the blade steel is wonderful. So, I mean, you're in great shape there. And if you can catch it on White Mountain and get a good discount uh, with the LTK discount code, you know, I've had a couple guys say they really, really want one of these. Um, and I got it because I just, I just had to check it out. It's the real steel S series stuff doesn't come out all the time. It's weird that these three came out together, but in any case, interesting, really interesting, really interesting. And of course, there will be a separate video on the Relic, the Haverin, as well as of course now this Harrier. So cool looking knives. Hey, thanks for joining me. What can I say? I don't know. Flanagan, are you taking vacation, dude? Finian is, that's for sure. In any case, hey, thanks so much for joining me. Um, but it's fascinating. I don't know. Real Steel, I mean, Real Steel's making some other really good stuff. And that Poltergeist Works um, thing, that they're, the, the relationship there, the collaboratives. So there's a more expensive Poltergeist one coming out. There's going to be several hundred dollars. And it's going to be really nice quality materials. So that'll be cool too. They're uh, knife makers in Poland. Uh, they did the 3000 Precision, the 3000 Precision 3001. So in any case, some interesting stuff coming out. Thanks so much for joining me. Hey, you never know what's coming next. Right, Flanagan? You guys, hey, take it easy because you know what we do around here. We love them knives, so stay sharp.